the open love today. Thank you all so much for such a warm welcome. Y'all feeling all right? I can tell. Oh my God, that just took me out. I said, look at all of this love in the space today. All right, well, I'm gonna start today with my good old mug. Here we go again. Can you see it? Cause I don't see that far. You see it? There you go, there you go. It says, enjoy the gift of an ordinary day. Yeah. Right? Right? Because I always say, my way of saying it is meet the day where it is, you know? If it's a rainy day, find a way to make it good and mushy and cozy. If it's a sunny day, get out there with it. Use your energy and have some fun and, and meet the day where it is, you know? Ooh, child, it took my breath to get out here today. I am catching my breath. So I tipped on out here in my little dress. But I got a question. Does anybody use coasters at home? Yeah. Oh, y'all fancy like that, huh? Because <laughs> I wanted to welcome you to my home today. So I thought I'd ask, like, what is it like if I came? What would it be like if I came to visit your house? See, my friend Walter, he real pressed. Baby, he had every dish in the house. You can't touch nothing. He got a coaster for everything. And everywhere, I got a house full of boys, so I'm, I'm not pressed in that way. So I just wonder, what is it like being in y'all house? See, my rule is, my, I got one rule, because if you come to my house, this feels like my house. This is my house up here. I made it feel like, you know, a homage to my home. But if you come to my house, I like to know that you're coming. Okay? And I'm funny about the phone, too. I'll be like, hey, who calling me? Now, who, what the phone? And if you show up at my door unannounced, no, I ain't gonna be able to do that one. <laughs> I'll be like, I didn't, I didn't know I had no guests coming over today. Well, they just go now, who is, look, peek out the door now, who is that little David? Who at the door? Don't you go open the door for strangers. That's my only, only thing. All right, we got that covered, okay. <laughs> Now, Sally, who works on the, in the staff, is very particular. Tell us about your house rules, Sally. Um, so my house rules are no outside clothes on the couch. Like, you come in, take your shoes off, I go upstairs, shower, comfy clothes, then I can sit on my couch. Then you can sit on your couch. I mean, yes, and everyone. So, <laughs> so you make the guests take a shower? No, okay, so I don't make them take a shower. I just sit there and cringe while they sit on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then, so, okay, when you're there and the people are sitting on the couch, what are you worried about that, that's gonna get on the couch? I don't know where they've been sitting. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't, their clothes are dirty, they've been outside, they've been at work. I don't know where they've been. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, okay, okay, Elizabeth. Now, you, you something else, because you sound like you used to living alone. I could tell that you ain't used to company. What is your rules and regulations in your household? So, very similar to Sully, I do not like people sitting in their outside clothes on my couch. I don't, I don't do that either. When I come home, I'm either taking a shower and putting different clothes on, or I'm gonna put a house dress on before I sit on my couch. And if I can get guests to... To what? If I can get them to put on like a basketball short or one of my house dresses. Okay, that's a step further. <laughs> <laughs> so Elizabeth, if I can't, first of all, I couldn't bring my uh, McCavity and the animals and stuff to the house with me if I came back. And then if we came by, you gonna give me some of your clothes. This Freshly sound right to y'all. <laughs> Freshly washed house dresses. I will give you a freshly washed house dress to sit down in. I don't know where you've been. I don't know if you've been. Well, you, you be having mustard and stuff. I don't like mustard. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what's guests. on your clothes. So you don't, you don't have a lot of house guests, clearly not. <laughs> Anybody want to go to Elizabeth's house? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, wait, Sally, did I miss it? You say you put on a blanket to sit on your own couch. Okay, so if I get home and then I'm going to eat dinner and I just want to get on the couch, I'll wrap a blanket around myself, then I can relax on my couch. That is something else. Okay, anybody in the audience, I want to hear what is it like to, what's your household rules? 
Y'all are funny. Hi there, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Millie, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Nice to meet you, Millie. <laughs> All right. What's your rules if I come to your house? Well, if you came to my house, you can't wear bare feet on my floor. Bare feet. Bare feet? And the dishes got to be washed before you go to bed. Okay. 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 That's my rule. Okay, but why, what's, because normally people make you take off your shoes right. when you come in their house, but they can't be barefoot in your house? Right. It's just the opposite because in Arizona, it's hot, right? Yeah. And if you walk around, and I have towels on my floor, and if you walk around, you see this little wet feet. <laughs> Walking on my floor, see everybody's little toes, and it's just kind of gross. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, that, I guess that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I'm processing it. Yeah, so you gotta either have on house shoes or your socks. You now you can wear shoes in my house. I don't care. Okay, yeah. well I'll I'll bring my socks because yeah, I like my socks. feet to be nice and mushy. If Would you I welcome to come, I would love to stop by. Thank okay. you for letting me know. <laughs> All right, well, I want to hear from somebody else. That was amazing. Hello. Hi, Jennifer. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, Melanie from Santa Clarita. All right. <laughs> Tell me, what's the rules? So if house? you're in my house and you shower, you must squeegee the glass and wipe down all the chrome. Okay. Yeah, because we can't have water spots. Mm -mm. Water spot. Yeah, we got to be able to see through the glass and we can't have water spots. So if you can't do that, then I have to do it. So... And it's okay to sit on the couch in your outside clothes? Yeah, you, I mean, you can sit on the couch. You just got to clean the shower. Like what about the one, the, uh, what, are you particular about the windows of the house too as well? Like, you know what I mean? Do you have to clean that? No, I mean, that gets clean, but it's more the shower. So if I'm going to somebody's house, I definitely take notice if their, their glass is spotty. <laughs> All right. Well, it kind of makes me cringe a little bit, so. Okay, I think I'll come to your house first, though. All right. Thank you for that. Y'all got a lot of rules. We got a great show. We'll be right back. I am so excited for this. With millions of followers on social media, our next guest has become known as America's Mom. Her new cookbook is called Cooking from the Spirit. Please welcome the amazing Tabitha Brown. Oh, my God. Goodness. I just love your energy. Everything about you. I was like, she's actually real. You're uh, here. Girl, yes. Very good. How you doing? I am wonderful. I love your spirit. Thank it you. It is amazing. And it's just amazing to have you here. Okay, now I want to talk about your journey. Did you ever think that you would, you know, Grass go this far? Right here. Look, at, oh, look, at, look at us. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Honey, listen, I never thought in a million years that my life today would be my life. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, I feel like I had myself in a box for a long time. Because mm -hmm. growing up and, you know, pursuing, I always just thought, I want to be an actress. That's it. Wow. And so that was me saying, that's it. I'm just an actress. But when I said, you know what, God, you can have me yes. and have your way with me, and I'm going to be who you created me to be, mm -hmm. I walked through every door he opened. Mm. And it has blessed me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did you realize you were this popular? Oh, girl. <laughs> I realized it. So, you know, I've been doing this about five years, right? Mm -hmm. And I was doing, like, Facebook Lives and cooking and every night, you know. I was growing my audience, you know, naturally, organically. Yes. And in March of 2020 is when I got on TikTok because, you know, my daughter told me to get on there. And of then 2020? In 2020, during the height of the pandemic. So for, like, a whole year, my following went from, like, 500,000 to, like, millions. But I was in the house. And so I was like, oh, I got these numbers. This is great. But I want to, I want to equate that to people. Uh -huh. And then when I went to Chicago to shoot The Shy, I was like, oh, I'm, it's a Whole Foods down the street. I'm going to go walk to Whole Foods. And I went walking down the street, and people started, like, honking the horns and, like, rolling the window down. Like, Tap! I was like, oh, these people know who I am. <laughs> and so then I remember thinking, like, Lord. <laughs> this is lover. It's so amazing. <laughs> But it didn't, it didn't really click for me that way. And then when I got, you know, to Whole Foods and Phoenix, I was like, I think I might need an Uber back. <laughs> and so when I got back, I called my husband. I said, I think I'm famous. <laughs> and he was like, babe, what you talking about? And I was like, the people was knowing me on the street. <laughs> and so that's when I knew. So tw early 2021 is like when it really clicked, like, oh, okay, I think I'm a little bit popular. <laughs> you more than a little bit popular, that's for sure. So outside of that, what's the biggest lesson that you feel you've learned so far from... Oh, the this biggest experience. lesson has been that I was always enough. 
Jess. Always enough. Always enough. Because for a really long time, I tried to be somebody else, mm -hmm. right? I tried to fit in. Um, and when you try to fit in, honey, how you gonna stand out, right? Right. And so when I decided to be free and go on my freedom walk and just be, I realized, wait a minute. So do you mean the tab that I covered up forever was already enough? She's enough just as she is. We're always enough just as we are. <laughs> and so that has definitely been the lesson. And then the other lesson that doesn't always feel well is realizing that everybody can't go. You better speak. <laughs> everybody can't go. That is true. Right? Yes. And I'm a, you know, I have a very giving spirit and I love to like, be like, come on y'all, yes. like, come and see what the Lord has done. Like everybody, let's go. But God had to, you know, he had to settle me on that. And he said, listen, when you keep trying to bring everybody, you're getting distracted from what I'm trying to show you. And so the people who are supposed to come, mm -hmm. you don't have to turn around to grab them. They right here. They'll be right there. You know who to grab. Yes. Yeah. I'm so happy you're sitting on this couch, honey. Yeah. <laughs> she can give some life lessons, honey. Yeah. I'm so glad you're sitting right here. I'm listening real good, too. Okay, <laughs> now... I have a son, and he loves some basketball. Your baby loves basketball, honey, too. Yes, Quest loves basketball. Yeah. Honey, 10, and he think he already in the NBA. Oh, Look at my baby. <laughs> yes, that's him, honey. He got my whole face, don't he? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Tell my husband, too. He got my whole face. But yes, he loves basketball from the time he was a baby. Look at him. From the his, time he was a baby? His Did he watch his dad play at all? word was basketball. back -ball Really? was his first word, back -a ball <laughs> And so when I was pregnant with my daughter, right? <laughs> he sleep with balls. He sleeps Listen, with the ball. It's a real thing from the time he was a baby. My, my daughter used to play basketball. Uh -huh. So when I was pregnant, we was in basketball games every week, every weekend. And then when he was born, we was at games every weekend. So he, you know, it was inevitable that he was going to know basketball. Yeah. But we didn't know that he would just love it the way he does. But he is a diehard basketball fan. Uh, he loves Dame Lillard, honey. That's his player. Did he get to meet him? Listen, he this didn't meet him in right? person, but he met him on on. Oh, we gotta see the clip. Yes. Hey, I told you I know Dame Lillard. Look right here. Bro. <laughs> Come in, bro. Come in. Look, look. He wanna. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Don't cry, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, you cry, man. Ew, man. Ew. Talk to him. <laughs> that is adorable. Look at me every time I, I see him. I totally it. understand. That's how I'm with my son. Yeah. They love their basketball, I mean, right? He loves Dane. And we didn't know he would have that reaction. Because mm -hmm. listen, Quest be cool as a fan. He'd be like, yeah, you know. <laughs> like, don't nothing really phase him. <laughs> and so we were like, OK. And he's met other like NBA players. Yeah. But this is his, that's his guy. That's his guy. And we LeBron, we team LeBron in our house. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, that's good. OK, OK. Oh, yeah. they went up. <laughs> Here we and, go. And he loved LeBron too, but he loved Dame. So we had no idea he was going to have that reaction. So to I'm hoping to take him to a game this season so he can actually meet him in person. That, that yeah. sounds amazing to me. Yeah. I understand because my baby loves his basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Recently, you met Patti LaBelle. What was that like? Everything Girl. about Mama Patti. Yes, it is. Listen, saw her in, well, saw her, you know, in concert at Essence. Uh -huh. And then we were at the airport at the same time. And my heart was like, <laughs> Like, I froze, and in my moment, I was like, oh my God, it's Patti LaBelle, but when she turned, she said, oh girl, you the girl to be smiling. See? <laughs> I was See? like, oh, she know who I, she, you, you know who I am. I don't care if she called me the girl who be smiling, she ain't gotta call me Patty. okay? But my mama was a, like, a Patty fan. Like, she loved purple, like, she did her, she loved Patti LaBelle. And when my mom was sick in 2006, mm -hmm. um, we thought that she was about to die then, even though she lived for another year. I got the call that like I need to come home and say goodbye to my mother, mm. and when and it was like uh, all of a sudden like it was very la like it, it wasn't like oh we know she's sick it was like right. it's something just happened, and I had got to the airport and I was a mess mm -hmm. that day, mm -hmm. and I had a layover in Philadelphia, and when I got on my flight, Patty was sitting in the in first class, and when I looked at her she winked at me, oh. and I got to my seat and I cried the entire flight home to go see my mama. And I remember getting there and telling her, you know, after she woke up and things, mama, I saw Patty LaBelle. Like she was on my flight, she winked at me, you gonna be all right. Like it was like yeah. a sign for me. So to be able to see her and yes. meet her and to tell her, my mama loved you 
and you know, I love you. It was just such a moment. Just in the airport, honey. That yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. Wow. More with Tabitha. We'll be right back. We're back with Tabitha Brown. I, was, I gotta ask you every question on here. Okay. Okay. Tell us about Tab Time. Is nominated. First of all, is nominated for two <laughs> Emmys, yes. which is amazing. Like, yes. your reaction to it was. Listen. We should definitely show the clip. Oh, okay. I just found out <gasps> that I have been nominated for an Emmy. <laughs> Why does it mean so much to you? I mean, you know, when you think of your dreams, right? You know, God said it's more than what we can imagine. Yes. And that's what I feel like I'm living in. But also, my dreams, I write about this in my book, I, I'm gifted in dreaming. Mm. And my whole life has been that way. I would dream things and they come to pass. And so this past summer, I, it was like maybe June or July, I can't remember the exact date, but I dreamt that Tab Time won an Emmy. And I was like, it's a YouTube show. It can't be nominated for no Emmy. That's what I thought. But I still, I text my team and said, listen, y'all, because my dreams don't be lying. Uh, I had a dream that tap time one Emmy. Look, that's a text right there. And they were like, really? Yes. I was like, I, I dreamt it. But once I dream it and I tell people, then I, I release it and I let it go. And so for that to come back, I was like, it's just God giving me more confirmation, yes. right? Because sometimes we'll dream things. <laughs> yes. Um, but also, it's a dream come true, you know, as an actor mm -hmm. and doing something that is so important to me. I love children. Mm -hmm. I think children are going to save this world. Yes. Um, and I want to be a part of that um, in helping heal the world mm -hmm. through kids. And so teaching them how to love themselves despite how they are, right? And despite right. what the world may tell them. Mm -hmm. Love yourself, be different, it's okay. Love each other, have compassion for each other. And I'm hoping that those same children grow up and they're adults who still love themselves and see each other and help heal each other. That's the plan. And so to be, you know, nominated for something like that, that is really a, a passion project for me. It's really from my heart. It's just like, oh, my God, I, I just feel so grateful for that. Yeah. I just feel so grateful. Yeah. 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 You can speak. <laughs> you speak the way you speak, but you're famous. For your cooking videos, have you always wanted to be a cook? Girl, no, I ain't want to be a cook. <laughs> Child, I used to, when I was, I told you I wanted to be an actress, so I used to be like, uh, Mama, I don't need to be in that kitchen, honey. I'm going to be famous <laughs> when I grow up, and I'm going to have a chef. I didn't know I was going to become the chef. Wow. I didn't know it was going to be See, me. So you got to be specific You got to be specific, right? Yes, I be yeah. talking to him. He taught me about that. Mm -hmm. I be like, Lord, you know, uh, I could still use a chef, Jesus. So mm -hmm. it's all right. But Let yeah. him know. But yeah, I did. I was a tomboy growing up, so mm -hmm. I had trees to climb, honey, footballs to run. <laughs> I had to do all that. I wasn't in no kitchen. My sister did all that. But now, I know my mom and my granny be in heaven like, can you believe this girl? She had no cooking. Because, <laughs> <laughs> honey, I was so far away from it. But Boy. here I am. Here you are. You yes. are here, yes. baby. Yes. And yes. we are here with you. You're right. So tell us about your new cookbook and what it's about. Yes. So my, my new cookbook is called Cooking from the Spirit. Because, cooking, uh, right, I use my spirit when I cook. So when I first started cooking, I've been cooking now for like 25 years. Because uh, I've been with my husband 25 years. That's how I know how long I've been cooking. Oh. So, right, when we first got together, I said, Lord, I got to feed the man, Jesus. Because I'm from the South. We both from North Carolina. And so I was like, Lord, I got to, you know, I at least got to know how to cook. So I used to call my mama and my granny and mm -hmm. my aunt, and they would tell me over the phone how to cook certain things. And so they would be like, you know, put a little bit of this in there. Just do it, you know, when your spirit tell you, you know, whatever feel right now. I messed up many meals in the beginning. <laughs> Let us be honest about that. And I tore them up. I had a heavy, <laughs> salt, up. I had a heavy salt hand, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love garlic powder. Because my granny said, let me tell you something. You, you get familiar with garlic powder. Uh -huh. You leave that salt alone, honey. Because, you know, I've been had high blood pressure before I was 25. <laughs> But, uh, but so uh, cooking from the spirit became a thing. And so I really would, you know, I taste as I go. And if it feel right or taste right, I'd be like, okay, this is enough. And so what I really wanted other people to do was learn to trust themselves in the kitchen. Because what I realized is if you need a recipe, every time you cook, you don't trust yourself. And that's not just mm. in the kitchen. 
Somebody Y'all call pop me. that. You see she be speaking, honey. See that? Did you see that? But that's true, uh -huh. right? Because that just means also in life, you, it's hard for you to make decisions because you don't trust yourself. Wow. So start in the kitchen. Let's have fun. It's the kitchen, honey. It's food. I better get How in the hard kitchen. can it be? So yes, cook from the spirit and have fun. Cook from the spirit and have fun. Y'all yeah. take your notes because I am. I'm like, woo. Yeah. Okay. I have to know, how do you manage to stay so positive? You're such a light. Oh, well, you know, I've been in a real dark place before. Mm -hmm. It ain't no fun. Mm -hmm. Right? When I was sick, I had a, a very uh, strong depression, major anxiety. And my prayer was, God, if I get out of this, I'm going to always choose joy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to always choose light. And I do that intentionally. And I know it ain't easy. It doesn't mean I don't have bad days. Right? I'm right. still human. Yes, ma'am. But I make a choice. Right. I choose joy. I choose to be a light. I try my best for that. Right? I, I really want uh, other people to feel this. Right, and this, this joy I have, honey, it's, it's like, yes. it's unspeakable, right? And yes. that's, you know, I get joy when I think about, <laughs> like, that's what comes to me. You better come right? on. Right, it's just joy, and I want to give that to everybody. Well, you're giving it to us. Yeah. You really so. are. Tabitha is going to cook for us when we come back, y'all. Let's see what that's about. Back with Tabitha Brown. She's going to teach me how to do well in this kitchen. Show me what's going on here. All right, very good. Now, so first and foremost, everything here is vegan, because you know I'm vegan, mm. right? OK, so okay. everything is plant-based. So starting with, it's, it's some, you know, it's we going into the winter season. I know you're from Chicago. Yes. I heard you be cold a lot. Yes, I'm freezing okay. right now. <laughs> Yes, so we got a little soup here for you. So this is broccoli cheddar. It smells amazing. One of my favorite things when I used to go to Panera Bread, honey, was a broccoli cheddar I soup. Love Panera Bread. Oh, right, well, you can make it yourself. So it's already, we already have our broccoli and our carrots and onions in here, but not onions for you because I know you don't like them. I heard you, you just like my husband. <laughs> ah! Don't, oh, he don't like onions he either. He don't like onions either, honey, but he eat them and not know sometimes, but I ain't See, do that to you, I promise. Oh, no, I may be able to <laughs> check it out. So but it look, smell real good, okay. It's good. So look, you add as much cheese as you want to in here, right? Uh -huh. Like so, like that. And then we have a, a little bit of yogurt, and this is yogurt? vegan yogurt, right? It helps it make it look creamy, okay? Put as much as you want in, mm. like so, like that, okay? And then you just stir it, and as it heats, that will all melt down, like so, like that. Let me smell it. Okay, get into it, it honey. It smell good. Very good. And then look, we'll let that cook down. But this is how it'll look when it's done. Like so, like that. See that? Yeah, that and looks amazing. And we just amazing. add a little bit of croutons you, on top. Okay. Yeah. These is Kelly's croutons. Croutons in the soup. So these are like a little cheesy crouton on top. Oh. Yeah. But you don't have to if that's your business. If that's your business. Okay. I like that. And a little bit, you know, this right here to make you look fancy. <laughs> you know how you said you don't really be business. cooking? Uh-huh. So you do this to make people think you really do be cooking. Okay. Yeah, you just, you know, top it off. See, and you want to try ready it. for the holidays, honey. Yeah. They don't think I'm going to put a dish it's on the table. It's a little bit high. It's a little bit high. I'm going to try this out. Try it and see. Was it hard to go vegan? Well, not for me, because I was so sick, right? Mm -hmm. And so I did it to, to save my life. Mm. What do you think about this? This is good. You know, it looked very good. You see that? Okay, we're going to move on. Put that on, put it on down for you eat it all right oh, now. Y'all ain't want that, did you? <laughs> right here? Yes, oh very good. Oh, my God, good. that's so good. Okay, so now these are some of my favorites. Now, Come one on, thing mm -hmm. I miss being vegan. I've been vegan over five years. I still miss seafood, okay? Okay. I do. That's my truth. You know how people count sheep when they sleep? Uh -huh. I count crab legs, <laughs> okay? I do, all right? So... I found the trumpet mushroom. This is a king trumpet because it's shaped like a trumpet. That's what it looked like. So we this. use these, right? And we slice them like so, like that. Mm -hmm. And it gives you the look of a scallop, right? Mm. I call them ballops because they vegan scallops. I made it up and I can do that because that's my business, okay? Very good. So they'd be right here and when you put them on in a bowl. And then we have a little seasoning. This is my favorite seasoning. Uh, it's called nori for cocky. So it's like uh, sesame and a little bit of, you know, it's all the things that make it taste like seafood. So this is your seafood? Yeah, you put that on in here, okay. like so, like that. And then you got your little uh, salt-free seasoning, mm -hmm. okay? Put your little Greek seasoning on in there, like so, like that. And this is Old Bay. Oh, okay. So we got salt in it. So, okay. Bay, Bay, easy on the salt, okay? Put easy a little bit in there. The salt. Just a little sprinkle, like so, like that. Okay, and then we got a little bit of olive oil because you can usually use butter, mm -hmm. but I know that you don't do butter, right? I don't like no butter. So you can substitute it okay. for olive oil. Now, do you not like butter because it's dairy? No, it's just, I don't like the way it tastes. Oh, because it's butter, and that's your business. <laughs> and okay? she said that's, that's what my business is. And that's all right. So you mix all this up together, okay? <laughs> what is Thanksgiving like that's at your life. house? Because Thanksgiving is like everybody else's. Do you believe me? Don't you want to go to her house for Thanksgiving? Listen, I have oh, everything. I right. 
I uh -huh. do. You can put a little bit more olive oil in here. It feels, I could feel the holiness. Listen, I put everything except we don't stuff no turkey in my house. I, oh, that's got, your house rule. Listen, we got greens, we got mac and See, cheese. See, everybody got the house rules. Uh -huh. Listen, we have all of the things. I got candy yams, I got stuffing. If you had to give up one, the mac and cheese or the candy yams, which one would have to go? Mm. Mm. I'm gonna have to let the yams go. You will let the yams I go. I need that mac and cheese. You in need my the life. mac and cheese. I got the hat. See, I will have to let the mac and cheese go because I need to. Yeah. Really? Sweet potatoes. Yeah. You like sweets though, don't you? I mean, I don't like mac and cheese. We'll see. We different, and we can do that because <laughs> what? That's our business. We can do that. Yeah. So listen. <laughs> What that you... soup is my business. <laughs> that soup is everything. Right. So listen, so once you put your scallops, so I, I'm going to just show you real quick. You would put these on a cast iron skillet, right? I use this to make it look like I'm grilling, OK, to get the little grill marks. Mm. And then they look so like that. OK, All right. Ready so you're going to try it? Yes, ma'am. OK. Because after that soup, I want to taste everything. Try it out. That's the vegan oh my scallop, God. the valop. Oh, say it again. Tell the people. Oh my God, it, it really tastes like a scallop. You see that? What you doing up in here? Baby, yes. let me, let me, me try one more time. Look. I'm listening. She, she double dip and go ahead. That's this go Y'all better get a plate. Okay. You see that? I'm listening. But don't it taste like a scallop? It does. You see that? Very good. <laughs> okay. Now, real quick. So these are barbecue meatballs, right? Barbecue meatballs. Barbecue meatballs. Okay. When I first went vegan, I thought, Lord, I always made these for my family using like ground turkey. And now how am I going to have it? We can still have it. We use a little vegan meat substitute, okay? Mm -hmm. Got a little red peppers, put that on in there like so, like that. Put your little cool. garlic powder in there, okay? We salt free over here today. Okay, and then <laughs> salt free, season it here. And then we mix it all up. You want, look, you want to make a meatball? Um, uh uh, look at them nails. <laughs> That's all right, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you real quick, okay? Listen, we'll ball it up. Taste it's all right, <laughs> okay. it's all right. You ball it up like so, like that. Look, look at there. <laughs> that's how you know somebody don't be in the kitchen right here. <laughs> Listen, but that's okay. Me, guess, but I'm making a dish. But you make a little meatball. She's gonna help me out. You add them here. You see how these are browning? And then you would add your uh, maple syrup and your barbecue sauce and so, let that cool. Go ahead and grab so your. I can eat that. Yes, you can. Oh, grab okay. your look right. Or oh, you, I got look, my fork. Go don't you worry. Go ahead and grab now, your you one. You want me to get one of these over Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Okay, y'all hold it. the line. I think I got mine. Let's see what she think, y'all. And you see when somebody take it off their pork with their hand. This is good. <laughs> Very good. Oh, Y'all better, <laughs> better get one. Oh my God. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. This is Thank I'm you. I'm to your house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Help, let me chew my food. Okay. Tabitha's cookbook, Cooking from the Spirit, is available now. And today, yes. everyone here is getting a copy. Yeah. We'll be right back. This is so good. Our next guest is breaking records and showing teenage girls that anything is possible. She is the first high school female football player in the nation to score two touchdowns in a varsity game. From Laguna Beach, California, please welcome Bella Rasmussen. I'm so in awe of this whole concept. <laughs> I love, first of all, that you're showing girls that anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Tell me, when did you first start playing football? So I was six years old, and my brother and my cousins, they played football uh, for like three years, and I sat at all their practices and games and watched them. And, you know, I, one day I just told my mom, I was like, I kind of want to play football. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay. And we started looking for flag football leagues, and, you know, they didn't have anything for my age. So I just told her, I was like, okay, we'll, we'll just play tackle football. <laughs> and they're like, are you sure? And I was like, I'm sure. I promise I'm sure. And they're like, okay, but are you, are you sure? <laughs> You're sure. Yes. And I was like, yes, I'm 100% sure. And, you know, it's been, it's been going on now for like eight seasons, and I don't remember a time when I wasn't. Eight seasons. <laughs> that is so amazing. <laughs> okay, I can tell you're very serious about your, your craft. It's amazing. <laughs> what is it like being the only girl on the team? So, you know, I think a big assumption is that maybe I'm just a kicker. Like, we don't do all the same drills and everything. But, uh, yeah, no, we, we, they're very inclusive. It's definitely like... You're expected to lift. You're expected to be at all the practices. It's a lot of hours, a lot of time, but, um, you know, it's 100% it's just, they don't see me any differently. It's absolutely like you're just part of the team. You're a teammate. You're, they want to see me succeed the same as thing as uh, I want to see them succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think that there's ever been a feeling of I'm differentiated from the rest of them. It's always like, if you're going to be here, you're expected to do the same things. You're expected to participate. If we're running, you're running. It's like if we're doing scout, you're doing scout. If we're running plays, it's like you better know them, you know? It's, it's no different is the, is the biggest thing, I'd say. Mm. 
Do you think, um, have you noticed if that you've inspired any of the other girls from your school to want to play? There's a girl who came out and she played as the kicker on our JV level this year. Her name is Mitzi. I love her. She's the sweetest little thing. She's a freshman. Um, but other than that, I mean, I have a lot of girls in our town who will come up to me after the games or even, like, when we had the little, uh, like, cheerleading squad. Like, we have the, yeah. like, baby cheerleaders that come out and they cheer for some of our games. And I remember I was standing on the sidelines and I heard people yelling, Bella, Bella. And I'm like, what's going on? And I turn around <laughs> and they're all back there and they're like, Bella, hi. And I'm like, hi, guys, you guys are so freaking cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, they're adorable. And they come to all the games and I'm like, you guys are so cute. But Is that imagine you showing, you know, the cheerleading girls, like, you could be out here playing just like me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That has to be... <laughs> You're paving that way. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's powerful. For sure. Um, what would you say to other girls that want to play? Football? I think that it's one of those things where I think that as a young girl, you're kind of told that there's a box that you have to fit into. And we're raised that it's like there's certain things you can do, there's certain things you can't do. Mm -hmm. And I think something like football is such a taboo topic. It's like, you can't play football, come mm -hmm. on. But no, it's like, if you have a goal set in mind and you have something that you want to go do, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. And I can't put enough emphasis on that. And that comes with anything. It's you're not showing just it. football. It's not just football. It's like anything that you want to do, just go out and do it. And every time someone tells you you can't do it, put, it, put that into your box of reasons as to why you're going to. Put it in your box of reasons of why you're going to. <laughs> My mother used to say, I have to show you better than I could tell you. <laughs> okay, so explain the record that you set and what it means to you. So I became, a couple weeks ago, the first girl in what I thought was just California state history, just found out a few days ago that it was reported as a national record. Um, Yo, <laughs> that's why I was like, let me make sure I'm saying this right. Yeah, I was the first girl uh, uh, to ever score two touchdowns in a varsity football game. You're gonna change this game. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. Yeah. Man, that's powerful. What with Bella after this? <laughs> We're back with high school football star Bella Rasmussen. Okay, so first of all, I want to know, do you want to go to the NFL? Oh my gosh, if I had the opportunity, yes, absolutely. Who would turn down the NFL? I think you could. <laughs> Who would turn down the NFL? I think um, you could. You know, but that's just something that it's like one day at a time, I guess. It's like, we'll see what happens next, but yeah. I, sure, yes, absolutely. Yeah. What else are you into? Like, what else do you like to do? Um, you know, I really love the holidays, specifically love Christmas. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Okay>. Specifically <laughs> Christmas. I, anybody that you ask at school, they're like, what is Bella interested in? Football and Christmas? Football and Christmas? That's all she likes? Football and Christmas. Oh, my gosh. I remember, like, the day after Christmas, I got up to my grandma's house, and I literally asked my mom, I was like, what do I do now? I was like, we have so many more days until Christmas is here again. <laughs> And I mean, like, I'll be in May and I'm like listening to Christmas music and my mom's like, will you turn Michael Bublé off? And I'm like, no, I will not, thank you. And I don't blame because I love some <laughs> Christmas too. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing you're a pretty big NFL fan. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Who's your favorite team? The Chargers. What is it? The LA Chargers. Y'all hear that? <laughs> okay, well, since you're such an amazing player, the Chargers want to give you two tickets to an upcoming game. So we want to see you to a game. <laughs> Maybe you could get out there on the field and play. Oh. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> Since I'm a Christmas fanatic, I thought I'd throw that so in there. You, you like it? Yeah. You check it out. I love it. Are you serious? Now, don't hurt them on that, on that field and get out there and let them have it, but you can. But you like your gift. My mom's going to take this from me. She loves coffee, but I won't let her. I won't let her. That? I love how excited you are. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Y'all support this girl. So much. We'll be right back. Oh, my God. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.